Yes, hello. Finally, how are How's you? How's it going? Bro? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Can you turn your camera this way? Sure, no problem. Uh, let me place it on something. Yeah. So how's Cyprus, man? How are you finding it? It's good. I'm, I've, I mean, I've been here before, so it's not like a, it's not like super new. Cool. But um, isn't it like very hot for you? Yeah, I like. It. It's pretty hot. Yeah, I'm. I'm like. I'm not a fan of heat, but it's okay. <laughs> I can handle it. Yeah, but like it's very quiet. Can you hear me alright? Because I've been having some uh, some issues with my microphone. Oh no, you're you're completely. It's completely working. Okay, so okay, you ready? Good. You ready? Yeah, sorry. Just give me one 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 second. One second. Uh, of no, I'm not ready yet. One second. Okay. Because I have a <clears throat> I have to have a hard stop around ten to two because I have a meeting right after. Um, Nice. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, one sec, one sec, one sec. I'm letting you focus. Why? Why is the internet so slow? Welcome to Cyprus, my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's very true. And it also depends on like where you that's stay. That's very true. I mean, it, to be honest, before it was broken, so now at least it's. <laughs> at least it's working exactly. or something. I mean, now at least it's working. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> How's the UK Wi-Fi? Is it good? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, we have we have a very good um, kind of IT infrastructure in Ukraine, so it's very good. Oh, so you're you're uh, from okay, Ukraine? Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just let's just go. Oh, you're you're from Ukraine, not UK. Uh. I am, well, I live in the UK, Yeah. Uh, but I'm ethnically from Ukraine. I thought you asked about Ukraine. Uh, okay, oh, cool. cool, 12 p.m. Okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. yeah. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's go. I'm cool. ready. Yeah, okay. I was going to say that you talk fast, but okay. Um, okay, let's get started. Okay, first, do an introduction of yourself, like who you are, like what do you do, how do you start with TikTok and stuff. Begin. Uh, I'm introducing myself? Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. So, my name is Max. Um, I live in London. I originally come from Ukraine and I do three things. Um, one of them is I make videos on TikTok, educational videos. Um, thing number two is I run a creative agency that uh, helps brands establish themselves and run ads on TikTok. And thing number three is that I'm a technology economist at a large uh, consultancy. So, I um, I write stuff and I make presentations and I tell kind of big brands what they need to do um, to succeed in the world of kind of technology and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So also like for, for the third thing you do that you consult brands what to do, big brands what you do. Like do you actually have experience in that? Are you a practitioner or like have you just studied big companies and then you give advice? How do you do it? Um, in terms of the corporate consultancy, uh, I have, what, maybe one year of experience, um, but I'm part of a team that I've worked with very smart people, so it's a team of five, it's called uh, Business Futures, and uh, we have uh, kind of economists, public policy specialists, and so on, technology specialists, so um, I think as a team we're pretty pretty qualified, probably by myself, um, I would struggle to give like a full package, but but by myself, what I, what I do better is what I do in the creative agency, which is more around kind of marketing and advertising. Yeah. So uh, how did you get started with this, like TikTok videos with the consulting and stuff? How did you get started with this? How like, did you figure it out, like you want to do that? Yeah, so, so with, the, with TikTok, uh, I had a podcast before that no one listened to. It was called Max Talks AI. It was about artificial intelligence and I had like seven listeners. Um, and it was like super nerdy. And then my <laughs> sister was in this app all the time. It was called TikTok. I was like, what is it? She's like, well, you're not going to get it. Like, it's fine. And then I recorded one video and uh, it didn't, it had like maybe 80 views or something like that. Um, but someone actually went and checked out my podcast because that video was promoting my podcast. I was like, oh shit, this is great. And then um, that was more than a year ago. And since then, I have been making at least a video a day. Um, so now I have like something like 2000 videos, something like that. So yeah. Yeah, okay. did you, I just, I just got, I just got hooked. Yeah. Did you hear about the news that, uh, in the, that the uh, TikTok got banned in India and now like the U S is trying to like ban in, ban TikTok. Like, did you hear about the news? Yeah. I mean, I hope so. 
hope the US doesn't ban TikTok. Like that would be very bad for me. Oh, that's very very bad for you. Like honestly, I want to like I want them to mm. ban TikTok. Uh, we can all start over again in another app like TikTok. So like I, I don't know. I like I like when you start over. I like from the beginning. You feel me? Yeah, but th- there's going to be no starting over in that market. It's either TikTok or Facebook. But Facebook is for uh, for old people now. Okay, not old, old people like fifty year olds, ninety year olds, and some stuff. Yeah, but the, the time the time the time when uh, you could start a social media app from your garage and win is over. It's not going to happen again. Um, now, now if you if you if you look at TikTok, I mean, they came with billions of dollars, and they still struggled so much to get market share. So the times of buying and not, like that's over. That game is no longer played. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested to see like uh, what's gonna come in the future because like, I love I love when they compete for example like Instagram with like YouTube and TikTok I love when the big companies compete so what are your thoughts about like quantity versus quality like do you believe in it's better to like do one video and do your best or like just like do a few videos per day or, like one video per day and like me- do it mediocre what do you think about that um, I think for most people uh, it's helpful to choose quantity over quality because people overthink stuff a lot. And uh, I think the, for major- for nine out of 10 people that are listening to this, probably the problem is that they're not posting enough, that they are either scared or they think they're not good enough, blah, blah, blah. Like I rarely meet someone who posts too much. Like that's, that's a very rare problem. Um, that said, you know, there is a, a friend of mine, Melissa, she, she started the step chickens. A cult on TikTok, mm-hmm. um, and she and she is like her mantra is quantity over quality, and she's doing very well with it. At the same time, for someone who is like a, I don't know, like a um, like Mr. Beast, for example, he doesn't post all that much, right? But every video video is a hit, and that's what's important for him, and that's what's been working out for him. So I think it's kind of it depends on your personality. But if I had to pick one, it would be quantity because. If you don't produce, then you don't know what's quality and what's not. Yeah, the fact true. that you think that something, like that's what I see all the time. People think that something is good in their head and it's not. And if they tested it in the market, they would know that it's not. Um, so sometimes I have to, I have to, I have to yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, correct me, like, tell me your thoughts also on this. I think, like, my opinion is that you should get an idea, think of your idea. And like make it as, as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect because like perfection, as Gary Vee said, is like, is like for insecure people. And like do your, the best you can, put it out and test it. Don't be like the last one, be like, oh no, I don't like it. Just put it out since you've done it and test it. But like I think on the other side, I don't think you should like record a video like one time talking about like, I don't know, quali- quantity over quantity. And like, just post it with like no subtitles, no cover and some shit or like without like planning yourself. I think you should do the planning, like organize your thoughts and some stuff and then post it. What do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, and like, you know, Gary Vee is great and we work very closely now with, the, with his team and with him. Like, obviously it makes sense uh, for him. But at the same time, if you look at his YouTube, you know, he went from a daily blog to a weekly blog, right? So, so there is something there. Uh, in terms of like, it's not as, I think why, the reason why he says that is because that's what most people struggle with. That he's not actually answering, answering the quality versus quantity question. He's answering the question, I'm not posting because I'm not confident enough. Like that's a whole different question that is framed as quality versus quantity. Yeah. So, so the conclusion is like, should people do like quantity or quality? You should just do like, I mean, if you can produce 10 videos a day, great. Like if you feel yeah. good about them, great. Like I, if I make something that I don't feel good about, I don't want to put it out. It's just like, I don't know, what if whatever person has seen me for the first time and they see this and I'm just not confident in this piece of content. Like, so that's kind of what my thinking is. And also, you know, you develop a certain style, you develop a certain vibe. And especially when you are, I think, kind of coming up and stuff like that, people aren't going to consume everything. People are going to consume what gives value to them. No one gives a fuck about how you woke up and did yoga. Like, no one cares about that uh, until you're established. Then when you're established, okay, people care about your life and what you do. And, like, that's fine. You can vlog and stuff like that. When you are coming up, like, you have to provide value. You have to do videos about how to. You have to make comedy videos, you know, stuff like that. Um, So, yeah, I mean, that said, I used to post 10 TikToks a day. And uh, did it work? Now, so. Did it work or no? 
I think so. So like, uh, so like you tried quantity, and then you then you do like you do much less now. So like it's more quality. So you so you tried both. Yeah, I mean, like, you, well, I do like two videos a day, sometimes three. So it's it's still a lot. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say, and I also shoot them with my camera and stuff. So like it it's I'll, you know I think I right now I have kind of a good balance. Mm -hmm. Um, and at least I know that I can do this. You know, sometimes you place kind of this. Uh, you know, sometimes you say, oh, fuck, you know what, I'm going to be a content creator and like every day I'm going to be doing a vlog and like you haven't filmed anything before and mm -hmm. like you, you don't know how long it's going to take and like things come up and sometimes you don't want to film sometimes, you know, so it's like sometimes if you place this huge kind of goal for yourself, then you just don't do anything it's and too you much. just are there dreading the day yeah. and like not starting. At least like now that I know, okay, at least one video. Can you do one video a day? Like that's my self talk. Yeah, I can. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe two. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, just mm -hmm. because if I just start pressuring myself for more. Yeah. Also, I'm not a full time social media creator. Like I have two other things that I do that demand sixty six percent of my time every day. So, yeah. you know, you got to be realistic. Yeah. So, like, also another question that I have for you is like, what do you think about like making your own your own original ideas and copying ideas from others? What do you stand between that? Should people like do original content or like copy from others? There are no original ideas. Like maybe maybe only Elon Musk has original ideas. Like what is an original idea? Casey Neistat daily vlog was not an original idea. Yeah. Uber was not an original idea. Like I don't know. Like POV is not an original idea. Cosplays on TikTok is not an original idea. A cult is not an original idea. So it's like I don't think you obviously don't steal content like as simple as that yeah. um for me a lot of people are remaking uh, my series about psychology tricks like a lot of people like it a lot of people translate it in other languages they hit me up and they say can i translate it in german uh, i say yes sure tag me that's fine like and they get views and stuff like that and like i'm happy because you know like whatever like yeah. I, I don't yeah. speak german so i couldn't make that piece of content mm -hmm. anyway so if someone's yeah so, but, uh, uh, you know, I think, you know, on TikTok, definitely have a look at trends and what's going on, especially when you are kind of a smaller creator. Because again, getting on the For You page is harder and harder. And with original content, it's much trickier, although it can be much more rewarding. Obviously, people like originality. And like, that's what I kind of pride myself on. Like, that's the, my favorite comments are something like, uh, you know, like I haven't seen this type of content. I really like what you're doing on this platform, on that platform, or blah blah blah. Like I really like to be different, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you know, I used to do the same trends that like other people did, just like in a different kind of take. Um, yeah, I, I, so, yeah, I, I think I think it's a balance. Yeah, I, uh, sorry for interrupting. I understand what you're trying to say, but I mean, like original content. Of course, it's gonna be is is like. You can never make 100% original content. I mean, like content like Mr. Beast, he, he sits down for like one hour, he brainstorms an idea, then he like does it. He doesn't like, doesn't go like on other like YouTubers, just go see something and he picks it out. He just thinks of an idea. I think, I, I mean, that, that, what, that way. Should people like do that or like just see something on TikTok and like do it? I mean, Mr. Beast steals ideas. Yeah, but he like, he gets it, but like he changes it, he changes it in his own way, he, like makes his own version of the idea. Sure, but it's hard. Like, yeah, um, I don't see I don't see anything wrong with taking someone else's idea and making it better. You know that that's also that's also a way to do mm. it. Like, you know, my thing is different is better than better. So I'd rather do something different than improve something that already exists. Maybe your thing is different. You know, so it's just again like I'm. I I think the, the right question is just for everyone trying to figure out how to establish a process and like a mental process to actually start doing something on social media and sticking to it. Yeah. Like if you place this, this burden off, I need to make this many videos a day or every video of mine has to be original um, or I have to get this many views. Like you will not, you will not be able to, to keep doing it consistently. Mm -hmm. And like consistency matters more than originality. It matters more than um, quality. It matters more than everything. Like that's, you, any process, you, any way you can get to consistency, um, is is probably should be your strategy. Yeah. How, how do you like think of your video ideas? How do you like? How do you think of the idea that you're gonna produce on TikTok, and how do you do it? You understand what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I have a, a bunch of uh, kind of notes on Evernote. 
mm-hmm. uh, TikTok ideas, YouTube ideas, uh, ideas for the agency, ideas for the consultancy. And uh, I just put stuff in. Like, I have a very, you know, I've, I've been uh, kind of blessed in a way, but also in a way cursed with, like, a very active mind. So I don't really stop thinking. Uh, and that also means that I'm not very good at, like, relaxing and stuff like that. Um yeah. And I have like racing thoughts and things of that nature. So I, I generally do have ideas. It's just a matter of like, I have notes to put them down. Uh, sometimes I wake up and I don't know what to film. So I just think like either with a piece of paper or just in my head, um, Google stuff that's interesting, like look mm-hmm. at the news, mm-hmm. something that's popping, something that's, that's kind of exciting. Uh, I mean, now I've been kind of just browsing psychology journals and stuff like that. Cause I'm doing this series and like, what different things mean about your personality. So I've been kind of trying to do my research on that. Yeah. Um, so it's been kind of easier. I think when you have like a certain series, like a certain theme, then um, then it's 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 a bit easier to ideate because I don't really have a, a proper niche. I uh, spoke to a talent manager a few months ago uh, talking about potentially niching down. And she said like, how about you make your personality your niche? Mm-hmm. I was like, cool, I'm mm-hmm. going to do that. So I just did that. So I still don't really have like a, like a proper uh, area. So yeah. so for me, it's slightly harder because I can, you know, one day I can make a video about my cat. Another day it can be about yeah the, the, the US-Iran conflict. Like, I don't know. Yes, but like your niche is yourself. So like your niche is you, is your personality. So that's your niche. Like, that's, I mean, you get, you, that's everyone's, you do have a that's, niche. That's everyone's niche. Yeah. That's everyone's niche. Yeah, that's but true. But that's also very hard. Like if, if anything, that's probably one of the hardest ways to establish yourself. Like you really have to have a lot of energy. You have to have uh, something that's unique about you. So to me, like it's my life path, you know, coming from Ukraine to the UK, having four degrees, all of these things, like all of these make people interested in me. Like not everyone is, is privileged and blessed with like such a variety of like interests and areas. So I still think that probably niching down in the beginning of like, I'm the guy that does X. I'm the girl that does this. Like, it's, it's definitely a good idea. And I think maybe if I did that, I would have been uh, bigger by now, but bigger. I just couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Um, it's it's so okay, man. Like, we, just... we all do mistakes. We just gotta, like, learn from the past, do the present, like, and keep going. Let's not, like, overjudge ourselves. Exactly. Yeah, next question. Uh, any thoughts on climate change? Cool. Any thoughts on climate change? Yes, sir. I mean, fuck, like, one, one thought is that in Cyprus, they use a shit ton of uh, single-use plastic. That's what I noticed. It's funny how, like, on the islands, people just don't care. They Like, even though they are actually the, the most vulnerable to climate change effects, and the island nations are generally, like, the least likely to do anything about it. And, mm-hmm. Like, I mean, obviously, like, obviously it's an issue. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm not a climate change denier. Like, I think that's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> I think the evidence is so tell laid them. out. Fucking ridiculous. tell them, bro. Tell them. Please, for fuck's sake. Uh, yeah, so, but but again, like, to me, you know, um, when I was, uh, you know, pre-lockdown, I was, um, I work at, uh, um, near Walkie Talkie in London, near the bank station, yeah. and it's like a big uh, financial kind of district. And we had the Extinction Rebellion protest. So someone actually glued themselves to my do- to the like revolving doors of my office, so I couldn't go in. Uh, the protesters and stuff like that. Yeah. And the climate change protests became protests against capitalism, and uh, that's what a lot of the left is trying to do. They're trying to like if you if you look at Extinction Rebellion agenda, the reason why they go to the financial district and so on is because they. They place climate change as the feet of capitalism, as the system that, you know, doesn't have a limit, that keeps extorting resources. Mm -hmm. And that has nothing to do with the the truth, because, you know, Soviet Union and China that are, you know, Soviet Union used to be a socialist country, like the extinction were just as bad as the US. So so climate change has nothing to do with capitalism. Mm -hmm. So, like, don't steal this conversation. Like, those are two different topics. And, like, I think what the left tends to do, and this is why there are climate change deniers, is because the left is so ridiculous in the way they jump from one idea to another. You don't want to align yourself with any of their views. So, like, once you you say that you like capitalism, you get demonized for it, then I think what a lot of people do is they go, fuck you, you know what, I don't even believe in your climate change bullshit. So, I think (laughs) the climate change deniers are solely at the feet of the radical left. Um, yeah. That's kind of my idea. But at the same time, you know, people that protest, like we have to understand 
that to really tackle it, you might have to give up some of the quality of your life. Like, are you ready to give up your smartphone? Are you ready to not take Ubers? Are you ready to not fly? Yeah. You know, are you ready to yeah. not travel? I mean, like, How about that? Well, How well, about, well, sorry for you know, interrupting. Like, like it's, it's one difficult. of the solutions to this is like, it's capitalism because like entrepreneurs come up with the ideas to make this better, to make it like more environmentally friendly. I like, it's like, I think entrepreneurs are like gonna help during this process to become even better. It's just like we need the right type of entrepreneurs to, for the government to encourage them, maybe provide subsidies to like encourage the type of entrepreneurs to become more environmentally friendly and some stuff, make more eco yeah. like aeroplanes and some shit, or like provide like better like lab-grown meat because like animal agriculture is like one of the most serious topics that we that about climate change, the most serious issues. Like they need to, pro the government needs to subsidize lab-grown meat I don't know, scientists, how you call it, to like make something affordable and tasteful and accessible to humans to consume. Feel me? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, again, that's, you know, if you, you know, meat production is, is a huge, ambition, obviously, issue. And uh, what you're saying will work in the UK and the US. But globally, like, for example, in Brazil, meat production is one of the biggest industries there with like millions of jobs. And so much of infrastructure depends on it. And just there, it's not feasible for them to in any way to actually fund that without just plummeting their economy. So the rich countries will have to pay for that if they really want to, to keep going with this climate change agenda, especially with this lab grown meat. So, like, yeah, yeah. I think at a, at a global scale, this is going to be very, very difficult to do. At the same time, you know, mm -hmm. you asked about climate change. And something that I've been thinking a lot about is, like, you know, there, is, there are these different, like, ideological battles that we have right now, right? There is climate, uh, there is racism, there is inequality, um, there is identity politics, like, there, are, there is sexism, like, all of these things. And, like, what I'm seeing is a lot of people pick a, a stand on every single one of them mm -hmm. and try to yes. do something for every single one of them. At the same time, mm -hmm. almost by definition, and that's also what I'm seeing in, in the kind of in the in the among leftist friends, partially because they're generally better people than the rightist friends, but also generally less efficient people. Um, so, like to me, okay. I think that you kind of have to pick your battles in a way, and like picking your battle and actually making progress means not picking other battles. So, if you say that you are for climate change and against inequality and for this and against that and for this and against that, like you're not going to accomplish anything. Why not? Because all of these, are, because because you can't, because you don't have enough time to work on it. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have enough cognitive mm -hmm. power to actually mm -hmm. be informed and yeah. actually be able to make progress on those. The fact that you post about every single thing that fits your um, kind of value signaling, that doesn't mean, like, what are you actually doing? You know, like, so like for me, like I'm focused on figuring out, like I studied inequality at London School of Economics. Like I'm really interested in like figuring out the, the economic inequality and, and, and what is what is the system that, that would make it work yeah. for people to actually have social lifts and social mobility. Like, I'm yeah. really keen on that. And on confidence. Like, I think we are facing a crisis mm -hmm. of confidence and, and self-esteem. I want to figure out how to do it. Yeah, I mean, Partially, like, yeah. What, what's going to enable me to figure it out is saying, I care about climate change, I care about race, but these are not my battles to fight. I, mm -hmm. I love that you're mm -hmm. fighting them. Mm -hmm. But these are not my battles, yeah. you know? I think something to add here is like, I understand mean, what you're saying, is nothing wrong to be like against like inequality or like, like you want to stop climate change, but like, but like you have to choose something that you can like make progress on, like actually help, other than just like resharing or like doing some smooth stuff. Actually like go deep down into one thing that you're good at and you like, you think you like provide the most value and do that. For example, like if, if I'm most passionate about like climate change and I have like the best solutions that I can provide and help people against, I should go like through like climate change, the climate change issue. Okay, this doesn't mean I'm fucking racist or like I'm like anti like women, women rights. Exactly, exactly. I'm just like going exactly. deep down into like one topic. Also, exactly. Like, and yeah. like, that's just my opinion. Also, also partially motivated by like, look, I, you know, I, I have an advertising agency, right? This is not the most... Um, you know, even though I think that, that, you know, there is a lot of entertainment value, there is a lot of cultural value in it. 
it's not kind of the most like morally justifiable business. Like I don't feel particularly noble about doing this. I'm just interested in it and, mm-hmm. and I'm mm-hmm. happy to do it. So mm-hmm. this is why it's like, okay, you have to offset that with actually doing something that you know has social value. So like I picked these kind of few few topics that are related. Another one of them is is that is huge for me is transition mm-hmm. economy. It's like Ukraine and Ukraine itself, like you know, we, we are a country in complete disarray and like a lot of my thinking is trying to figure out what to do with it and I'm, I'm now partnering up with a lot of charity initiatives there in Ukraine, a lot of kind of IT initiatives, startup competition, programming competitions, like a lot of kind of social media collaborations, working with the government. So like that's also one of my things and I just know that mm-hmm. if I that if I start going hard on Black Lives Matter, like I, I will just I, I will just get swamped. I won't be able to do anything. Um, so I think that there are better people than me to speak about climate change. There are better people than me to speak about Black Lives Matter. Potentially, there is no better person than me to speak about inequality in Ukraine. I, mm-hmm. I hope you see what I mean. Yeah, I understand. Like you, you, you picked your niche. You like get most educated in there, and you focus on it. Like how can you provide the most value to like to the inequality? Yeah. 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 Okay, next question. Are you happy? Yeah. Why? Uh, because, because what's the alternative, right? Like, okay, so like, let's say you're unhappy. Like, why would you do that? Yeah, I mean like... You know, like, yeah. happiness, happiness is 50% genetic, 40% based on your thoughts, and 10% based on the external events, right? That's what, that's what the studies show. And the evidence is like, it existed for a few decades and it's very hard to argue with something like this. So genetically, I'm definitely gifted. I'm an optimist, like I, I'm sure that I'm pretty good on that side. So that's already gives me a lot more happiness than an average person. Yeah. Uh, in terms of my thoughts, I'm not that good at it because I, I put myself down a lot and I put a lot of pressure on myself. So I have to offset those with like constant like episodes of self-love. And uh, externally, you know, I generally have very good life circumstances, good friends, family, relationships, romantic, and otherwise, like, so, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm pretty good. Like, the only thing is that, obviously, I, my identity is in my, in my accomplishments, and um, that's something that I probably need to try to fix, because I'm very tied to, to keep doing stuff and keep achieving stuff, and, um, mm-hmm. and that's something that's obviously stressful. Okay. But generally, I'm happy. Yeah, like, w- one thing I'm saying to other people here is, like, choose your family and friends wisely and like invest time in them and build good relationships because like as a house if it if a house has good foundation then you're gonna have good foundation like this is like a step to success because like you if you have good family and friends it will like lead you to a happy life they will keep you accountable they will make you delusional they will like support you some stuff and that like also another question that i have for you is that what are you what, what are some observations that you have now in this world about like, I don't know, about climate change, about the marketing uh, industry, about the inequality? What are you observing now? I think that, you know, what, what, what I think of myself is kind of like a sandwich or, or like salami in between like two slices of bread. One slice <laughs> is Generation Z. And uh, another slice is, is millennials, right, and Generation X. Like, to me, I think that this, this generation is going to face a lot of opportunity, but also a lot of difficulties. Like, what I see is that governments are ill-prepared to, 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 keep, to keep doing politics as it used to be done. Politics is becoming advertising. Like, I, uh, you know, my childhood dream is to become president of Ukraine, and I've been looking at the way, I, I don't think actually I can legally because I moved, but maybe the constitution can be changed. Uh, we've changed it before for reasons that are much less pressing than this one. Yeah, uh, anyway. So, so, like, so, like, to me, you know, what I'm seeing in politics is that, like, the age of uh, you go into, your, like, your local kind of council and then you do the work there and then you go into a city council and then you do the work there and then you go into an area. Like, that's gone. Like, you yeah. are Kanye West. You have, you're famous. You have money. Run for president. You might win. Like, yes. that's fucking crazy. I don't think people understand how crazy that is. Yeah. And it's the, and it's, and it's the current generation, I think, that will have to deal with it. Like, these are the people that are governing our lives. Like, it's quite important. Mm-hmm. And in a country mm-hmm. like the UK with a lot of public funding, it's very important. Yes. So be very careful about choosing who is going to lead. Like, so, yeah. so to me, like, yeah. the crisis of politics of becoming a show 
a show, an entertainment show, rather mm-hmm. than a policy debate. Yeah. That's huge. I think that's that's so underrated. And I think people are crippled by choice and opportunities. Like in the world where you can be anything and anyone, a lot of people uh, become end up being a um, a, a wandering generality rather than a meaningful yeah. specialist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In, in the words mm-hmm. of Seth Godin, like it's very tricky to choose like and with social media with so many things like it's it's really tricky to choose a profession and stick to it it's the same in relationships like the reason why divorce rates blah 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 it's a global market like it's no longer you found a girl or a guy in your yeah. or whoever in your uh, in your village and then mm-hmm. you're with them like it's a global market yes, guess sir. what like if you are you know if you're on social media like you don't just get dms from people in your city you get dms from people all over the world so it's like that's that's going to be tough, and I, I think yeah, mm-hmm. I think probably the the opportunity is so massive for this generation that it's completely mm-hmm. crippling, mm-hmm. and like the decision making is suffering. And I'm, uh, yeah. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, uh, I how think to fix like that. one of the most opportunities now that we have is that the people underestimate the power of the internet and the power of social media. Like you can post content sure. and like you can mass a following and you can influence people and like through Kanye West because he's famous he can run for president some shit. Like I think people really and I also I, I'm also like guilty of this. I really underestimate the power of social media. Like for example you can build a following about sure. fucking Pokemon. Then you can fucking sell Pokemon. And then like you can build fucking social media about fucking socks. I know a, I, the person I interviewed before, he's doing some like charity thing about like cancer because like his grandfather died of cancer and like he put a company by selling socks for cancer. You can fucking do anything. I mean like people are underestimating the power of social media. What, that is very true. If, if you could say one thing to the entire world, what would it be? Um, don't listen to your parents. No, oh, fuck, yes, man. Yes. I fucking <laughs> agree on that. Like, okay, I have, to ca- like, I have to caveat this, but, like, understand that your parents uh, are, A, from the previous generation, B, they love you, so they're biased, if, and if you suck, they're not going to tell you that you suck. Some parents <laughs> tell you that you suck way too much because they themselves suck. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you have these two people, you have to love them always, unconditionally. They gave birth to you, all of that stuff. Love them, love them, love them. But they are probably not the best advisors. Find mm-hmm. other advisors for yourself. Yes. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's really hard because, like, um, they're, they're your fucking parents, man. They're, it's fucking hard, but, like, you kind of have to. Yeah, yeah, but, like, yeah. They're, they're not... Well, they, they can... Of course, but, like, it's not too difficult to understand that they are not your, your best guides, like, in, in life. Because they are, again, biased. And, like, they don't necessarily have the skills that are needed. So find mm-hmm. someone else. Yeah. What's the best advice you have been given? I've been given. Yes. Good question. Um, Two thousand years later. When I when I was when I was when I was a kid, mm-hmm. uh, a teacher at school told me to like keep being myself. She's like, when you go, she's like, when you go into like the world, Mm -hmm. she's like, a lot of people change. And she told me that, you know, just make sure that you don't change. She's like, please don't change because, because, you know, she she thought that I was, I was good as I was like kind of childish, like naive, always joking around, like complete, like daydreamer, like Mm -hmm. very kind of ambitious, like all up in the sky, like not practical at all. She's just like, don't change. And I, every time I'm thinking about like a, a risk averse move or thinking about like changing myself for a position or for something, I'm just like remembering her and what she said. So yeah. that's that's been huge for me. Yeah, like okay, this is a big personal question. I also have to. I, have to, yeah. I, I also have to go right now. Like the meeting has just started. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's do, like do an outro, do whatever you want. Do an outro, like before you go. Say say whatever you want. Uh, yeah, just like g- good luck to everyone. And like, if I had to leave you with one thing, is like, don't judge yourself too much. And uh, you know, listen to this podcast or whatever. You you can have um, a lot of self kind of doubt and like feeling like you're not good mm-hmm. enough. And like, mm-hmm. oh my god, these guys they don't know these things. Like everyone has their own thing. And like, if you judge yourself, you you've already lost. Yeah, man. I, I want to say one last thing to you. Please don't judge yourself because I know, like, you told me before that you're judging yourself. 
Just calm down, man. Patience. You're fucking young. How old are you? Twenty-four. Oh, cool. Howdy. I'm not, I'm not making you late to your meeting. Have a nice day. Peace. Thanks, man, for coming on the podcast. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. It was a very powerful like podcast episode. It was one of my favorite, if not my favorite. Every single time I've got, I've got a new favorite. Like this one was fucking powerful as fuck. Like. Okay, we didn't have a lot, of t- a lot of time. Hopefully, I can get him again soon. I really want to get him again. He has like so good knowledge, and I think he provided a lot of value to you guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed it also as much as I did. Thank you for watching. Leave it a like, subscribe, and uh, see you in the next one. Peace.